We've told you about invasive species before, plants and animals from other continents that have found their way into the lakes. But a couple of years ago, something came to Lake Michigan from outer space. Today, we bring you the story of the people who are trying to find it. In February 2017, a bright green orb lights up the sky from Chicago to Sheboygan and beyond. The National Weather Service confirming the overnight reports of a flash in the sky saying it was possibly a meteor streaking across Wisconsin and Illinois. It's caught on cameras across the Midwest. Scientists determine that the fleeting fireball is, in fact, a meteor that crash landed in Lake Michigan. We think that it was somewhere in the neighborhood of three to five feet across. So that's a large boulder of rock, probably massing hundreds of pounds, if not tons. They heat up to about 10,000 degrees and the outer parts start to vaporize. They, they break apart into small fragments. And if we're lucky, some pieces survive to hit the ground. Meteorites are incredible repositories of data from the very formation of our solar system. By studying them, we can find out things that we can't find out from any earth rocks or moon rocks even. We get the basic forming blocks of our solar system. The meteor splashdown also catches the attention of Chris Bresky, teen programs manager at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago. Space for a lot of people can feel very cold, dark, dead, distant. Right now, as we're talking, there are rocks from space older than the Earth from the formation of our solar system sitting at the bottom of that lake, just waiting to be discovered. Seeing a rare opportunity, Bresky launches the Aquarius Project, a teen-driven program with an ambitious goal of recovering meteorite fragments from the bottom of Lake Michigan. Something that's completely unprecedented. No attempt to recover a meteorite from a major body of water has ever been done before. So if we can pull it off, this will be a world first. To bring the project to life, scientists from the Shedd Aquarium and the Field Museum of Natural History join the team. You can be an expert in your particular field, but it's very difficult to be expert in multiple fields. And this particular project, you, we need a lot of different disciplines involved because of all the different types of things we're doing. One of the really cool things about the Aquarius Project is that we learn about so many different types of science and fields of science and engineering while we're trying to pursue our main goal of finding the meteorite. To determine where to begin the search, the team contacts a NASA scientist who uses Doppler radar to track the paths of meteorites. I'm Mark Fries. I'm a scientist at Johnson Space Center. I feel like this could be at NASA, but they decided to bring it here and share it with us. So I feel like that's very special because the fact that they trust us enough and they believe in us enough is also helpful. And that's what makes it so beautiful because it's not just like you're just learning, like people believe in you. The same radar that tells you about the clouds coming in on the weekly forecast, that radar is constantly surveying the skies. And so just, be, just like clouds running horizontally, it can also track things falling vertically. Meteorites break up when they hit the atmosphere. And they usually break up in a few different episodes. We believe that the largest fragments were probably fist-sized, maybe a little bit larger, but there would be a very few of them. But the smaller you go, the more and more of them you get. And so there would have been thousands of tiny pea-sized fragments falling in the lake. The radar images show that the meteorite fragments landed about 10 miles off the coast of Wisconsin, between the cities of Manitowoc and Sheboygan. Finding the approximate location is a good start, but the team has little idea what they'll encounter 200 feet below on the lake bottom. One of the biggest questions that we have been getting about this project is what does the bottom of Lake Michigan look like out there? And I keep telling people we don't actually know what's on the bottom, and they're stunned at that because millions of people live around the lake, you know, a lot of scientific research has been done on the lake, and yet we still don't actually know what the bottom of the lake is like at this particular site. To pick up the meteorite pieces, the team begins the design of an underwater recovery sled. Well, a lot of lake science is done through the use of sleds. Something that's dragged along the bottom, say a sled on snow, you have this sediment at the bottom of the lake, you can slide something over it. The students were incredibly involved in every step of the sled design process. Basically, the scientists involved gave a bunch of material to these students and said, how do you make this better? Can this work with meteorites? Could this work underwater? 
Because meteorites often contain iron, the team decides to use powerful magnets to lift the space rocks from the lake floor. The final build is named Starfall, the first ever underwater meteorite recovery sled. In July 2018, after months of testing, it's finally time to put their recovery sled to the real test. Right now we're headed out to the strewn field. We're headed out to the meteorite crash site in Lake Michigan, 10 miles off the coast of Wisconsin. We just set sail from Manitowoc. It's calm seas, clear skies, and we're gonna go where these space rocks are. They lower the sled into Lake Michigan, not knowing what to expect. This is the drop camera that's uh, zip-tied to the nose of Starfall, the meteorite sled for the Aquarius Project, and it looks like we're dropped right now. There we go. Hey, hey! All right. And we're right side up. Oh, my God. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, nice. Fantastic. Look. It's perfect. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah. It's not even leaving the ground at all. All right. And it's... Oh, hey, Fox. congratulations, everybody. Yeah. That is smooth. But underwater, the cameras right. reveal an unforeseen problem. Everybody was stunned to see the bottom of the lake covered with mussels, every square inch covered with mussels. That's a good surface for us apart from the mussels. The invasive quagga mussels not only cover the lake bottom, but they begin sticking to the magnets on the sled. The sand down there is iron rich through what's called magnetite. There are mountains next to the lake that have shed off a bunch of metal rich sand and these mussels have ingested that sand and become metallic muscles. I wonder if these are magnetic. It keeps on acting like it is. They're magnetic. And this one too. Despite the magnetic muscles, the team recovers some promising material from the depths below. We just had our first successful meteorite sled run of the Starfall. And right now we're sifting through all the content that the sled has picked up. And we're hoping through all this debris we're able to find our elusive meteorite fragments. If any of Not you find, fun. any of you see a, a roundish rock, let me know and, uh, and either hand it to me or I can, uh, I can pick it off. We've recovered perhaps 20 five-gallon buckets of sediments from the lake bottom and we've had teams going through them, sifting through them, separating them by size, trying to see if there are anything really that stands out. When we find interesting candidates, we take those to the field museum and they use more advanced instruments to identify what they're made of. They're scanning and they're even slicing open the content that we found that we think might be from space and I don't know, we're on pins and needles right now. We had a successful sled deployment. We've got some rocks to take back to the lab to sample. Overall, very pleased and very tired. While the Aquarius project team waits to see what their recovery mission yields, team leader Chris Bresky knows it's already a success. I mean, the future of this project in the curiosity of the students that are driving it. I think that they've inspired the scientists around them and vice versa. These students have opened up a brand new field of space rock exploration in our own backyard. So I think that to see the future of that will be really exciting. Space Rocks! You rock! Thanks for watching. For more on these stories and the Great Lakes in general, visit greatlakesnow.org. When you get there, you can follow us on social media or subscribe to our newsletter to get updates about our work. See you out on the lakes.